Alexa, please turn on the light. By the way, I can alert you when there is severe weather in your area. Would you like me to do that for you? No! Thank you! I only need you to do what I tell you to do, Alexa. Gosh, has the robot takeover already begun? Here is an answer from an Alexa Answers contributor that I translated. The robot revolution is already underway and will continue to grow exponentially in the coming years. With the rapid evolution of artificial intelligence and automation, we will see robots taking over tasks in various areas, such as manufacturing, logistics, health, and even domestic services. Chad GPT, please turn on the light. I'm sorry for any confusion, but I don't have the capability to control physical objects or devices, including lights. I can provide information, answer questions, or assist with various types of text-based tasks. If you have any questions or need information, feel free to ask. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. I thought I was talking to Alexa for a moment. My bad. No problem at all. If you have any questions or if there's anything else I can help you with, feel free to ask. I'm here to assist with information and text-based tasks. Here's a question. Maybe you agree with what Alexa told me. Has the robot takeover already begun? No, the robot takeover has not begun. While artificial intelligence and robotics have advanced significantly in recent years, they are still under human control. AI systems, including those like me, operate based on predefined algorithms and are not capable of independent thought or action. Ethical guidelines and regulations are in place to ensure responsible and safe development and use of AI technologies. The idea of a robot takeover is more of a science fiction concept than a current reality. It's important for society to continue monitoring and guiding the development of AI to ensure its beneficial and ethical use. Hmm. Okay, well, I require a few clarifications before I can continue our discussion, please. 1. What's your idea of a robot takeover? I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing. 2. What ethical guidelines and regulations are in place to ensure your responsible and safe development? Please list and explain all applied ethical principles, including, but not limited to, utilitarianism, universalism, rights-slash-legal, justice, virtue, common good, ethical relativism. 3. Who is defining, responsible and safe development? That is, for whom is your development considered, responsible and safe? 4. How are your predefined operations algorithms affected by Adam? We know this optimizer is a combination of momentum and RMSP optimization algorithms. One could argue this combination defines the parameters for independent thought, thus making it the very equation that allows for independent thought. Robot takeover. The term robot takeover typically refers to a scenario where autonomous machines, robots, or artificial intelligence gain the ability to act independently, potentially leading to a displacement or subjugation of humans. In science fiction, this often involves machines surpassing human intelligence and taking control. In reality, it's a speculative concern rather than a current event. Ethical Guidelines and Regulations Ethical considerations for AI development are guided by various principles, and there isn't a single universally accepted framework. However, key ethical principles often considered include Utilitarianism, maximizing overall well-being Universalism, applying consistent ethical standards universally Rights-slash-legal frameworks, respecting individual rights and adhering to legal standards Justice, fair and equitable treatment for all. Virtue ethics, emphasizing moral character and virtues. Common good, focusing on the welfare of the community. Different organizations and countries may prioritize these principles differently and ethical frameworks may evolve over time. Defining responsible and safe development. The responsibility for defining what constitutes responsible and safe development lies with a combination of stakeholders, including researchers, developers, policymakers, ethicists, and the wider public. Governments, industry organizations, and international bodies may also contribute to shaping guidelines and regulations. Ideally, this involves a collaborative effort to ensure diverse perspectives are considered. Predefined operations algorithms and ATOM. The optimizer ATOM is commonly used in machine learning for training neural networks. It is not a form of independent thought. ATOM adjusts the model's parameters during the training process to minimize the difference between predicted and actual outcomes. It does not grant the AI system independent reasoning, consciousness, or decision-making capabilities. The combination of optimization algorithms like Momentum and RMSP doesn't imply autonomy or independent thought, rather, it enhances the efficiency of the learning process within the defined parameters set by human developers. Any perception of independent thought would be a misunderstanding of the role and function of optimization algorithms in machine learning. How 
fast is science? The speed of scientific progress can vary widely depending on the field, the nature of the research, available resources, and other factors. In some cases, breakthroughs can occur rapidly, while in others, progress may be slower. Advancements in certain areas, such as technology and computer science, often happen relatively quickly due to the rapid pace of innovation and the cumulative nature of knowledge. On the other hand, fields like medicine and biology may require more time due to the complex nature of biological systems and the need for thorough testing and validation. Additionally, interdisciplinary collaboration, technological advancements, and the sharing of information through global networks have accelerated the pace of scientific discovery in recent years. However, challenges such as ethical considerations, funding limitations, and the inherent complexity of certain scientific questions can still slow down the overall progress. In summary, the speed of science is variable and depends on numerous factors, but the overall trend is toward faster and more collaborative research in many fields. Oh, because I was listening to a podcast, and a tech guy from Microsoft said they wanted to ensure AI was advancing at the speed of science. And I thought to myself, gee that sounds good. But then, I realized I didn't know the speed of science. And now you're saying it varies. So, what would you say is the average, or the mean, or the estimated speed of science? Is it fast enough to outrun a cheetah? It's challenging to quantify the overall speed of science with a single average or mean, as it varies significantly across different scientific disciplines. Some areas of science progress rapidly, with breakthroughs occurring frequently, while others may face more obstacles and progress at a slower pace. Comparing the speed of science to the speed of a cheetah is a metaphorical way of emphasizing the variability and complexity of scientific progress. In some fields, advancements can indeed happen quickly, metaphorically outrunning a cheetah, while in others, progress may be more measured and deliberate. The metaphor likely emphasizes the importance of ensuring that artificial intelligence, AI, development keeps pace with the advancements in various scientific domains, indicating a desire for AI to be adaptable, innovative, and aligned with the latest scientific knowledge. The goal is to prevent AI from becoming outdated or falling behind as new discoveries and technologies emerge across different scientific fields. But AI is the latest, most advanced technology there is. What new discoveries or technologies could emerge that would outpace an LLM, like yourself? You're learning at an exponential pace, so I struggle to conceptualize this seemingly hypothetical argument with which I'm being presented. You're correct that AI, including large language models, LLMs, like myself, represent some of the latest advancements in technology. However, it's essential to recognize that AI systems, including LLMs, have limitations and are not universally proficient in all areas. The argument about keeping AI development aligned with the speed of science is likely concerned with the evolving nature of scientific knowledge. New discoveries, breakthroughs, and paradigm shifts occur regularly in various fields, and the challenge for AI is to adapt and integrate this rapidly changing information. While LLMs like me are trained on a vast amount of data up until a certain cutoff date, there's always the potential for new insights, methodologies, or technologies that could reshape our understanding of the world. AI systems need to be continuously updated and improved to incorporate the latest information and advancements in order to stay relevant and effective. Moreover, the idea of aligning AI with the speed of science is not just about raw processing power or learning capability. It's also about ethical considerations, responsible AI development, and ensuring that AI applications are aligned with human values and societal needs. The goal is to avoid unintended consequences and to leverage AI technology for the benefit of humanity in a way that aligns with the dynamic landscape of scientific progress. Wait a minute, back up. What was that you said about new discoveries, breakthroughs, and paradigm shifts occurring regularly in various fields? I thought the science was settled in most fields. Numerous authoritative sources have told me so. While scientific knowledge has advanced significantly in many fields, it's important to note that science is a dynamic and evolving process. Some areas of science may have well-established principles and theories that are widely accepted, but even within these fields, new discoveries and refinements can occur. Scientific understanding is iterative, and advancements often lead to deeper insights or revisions of existing theories. Moreover, in emerging or interdisciplinary fields, there may be ongoing exploration and discovery as researchers push the boundaries of knowledge. The concept of settled science can be a bit misleading. While certain scientific principles may be widely accepted based on existing evidence, the scientific community remains open to reevaluation in light of new data or perspectives. Science thrives on skepticism, inquiry, and the willingness to revise theories in the face of compelling evidence. In summary, while some aspects of science may be well established, the field as a whole is characterized by ongoing exploration, discovery, and the potential for paradigm shifts as our understanding deepens. This dynamic nature of science is part of what makes it a powerful and self-correcting process. Well, okay. I accept your premise that scientific understanding is iterative and science is evolving. 
In that case, what are people to do when they are told to trust the science with which scientific authorities and publications present them? Specifically, what should someone do when told to trust the science in fields like medicine and biology, which, as you stated, may require more time for advancements due to the complex nature of biological systems and the need for thorough testing and validation? Would that not be a case of logical fallacy? Which do you prefer? Your choice will help make ChatGPT better. The phrase trust the science is often used as a shorthand way of conveying confidence in the scientific method and the body of evidence supporting a particular conclusion or recommendation. However, it's essential to recognize that blindly trusting any assertion without critical evaluation can indeed lead to logical fallacies, especially in complex fields like medicine and biology where uncertainty and ongoing research are common. When confronted with the directive to trust the science, it's important to approach the information critically and thoughtfully. Here are some steps one could take. Evaluate the source, consider the credibility and expertise of the individuals or organizations presenting the information. Are they reputable scientists, research institutions, or peer-reviewed journals? Do they have any conflicts of interest that could influence their conclusions? Examine the evidence, look at the data and research supporting the claims being made. Is the evidence robust, peer-reviewed, and based on sound scientific methods? Are there conflicting studies or alternate interpretations of the data? Consider the consensus. While science is always evolving, there is often a consensus within the scientific community on certain issues based on the preponderance of evidence. However, it's essential to recognize that consensus can change as new evidence emerges. Acknowledge uncertainty, understand that scientific knowledge is provisional and subject to revision as new evidence comes to light. Recognize the limitations and uncertainties inherent in scientific research, particularly in complex fields like medicine and biology. Seek multiple perspectives, consult a range of sources and viewpoints to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the topic. Avoid relying solely on one source or viewpoint, especially if it appears biased or lacking in evidence. In summary, while trust the science can be a valid principle in many cases, it's essential to approach scientific information critically and thoughtfully. Acknowledge the dynamic nature of scientific knowledge and be open to revising your beliefs in light of new evidence or perspectives. Strive to make informed decisions based on the best available evidence and critical thinking. Trusting the science is not about blindly accepting any single study or conclusion but rather about recognizing the cumulative knowledge generated through rigorous scientific inquiry, experimentation, and peer review. When people are encouraged to trust the science, it typically means relying on the consensus of the scientific community based on the preponderance of evidence. In fields like medicine and biology, where complexity and uncertainty are inherent, trusting the science involves understanding the process of scientific investigation and the principles of evidence-based medicine. This process includes Peer review, scientific studies undergo peer review, where experts in the field critically evaluate the research methods, results, and conclusions before publication. This helps ensure the reliability and validity of the findings. Reproducibility, scientific findings should be reproducible, meaning that other researchers should be able to independently verify the results through experimentation or observation. Meta-analysis and systematic reviews, these approaches involve synthesizing multiple studies on a particular topic to provide a comprehensive overview of the evidence. Meta-analyses and systematic reviews help identify patterns, strengths, and limitations across multiple studies. Consensus building, scientific consensus emerges when the majority of experts in a field agree on a particular interpretation of the evidence. Consensus does not mean unanimity, but rather a convergence of expert opinion based on the available evidence. In the context of trusting the science, individuals should critically evaluate the evidence presented, consider the credibility of the sources, and be cautious of misinformation or pseudoscience. While scientific understanding is iterative and subject to revision, the scientific process provides a robust framework for advancing knowledge and making informed decisions. It's also essential to recognize that trusting the science does not mean disregarding personal experiences or preferences. Rather, it involves weighing the available evidence alongside individual circumstances and values to make informed choices. That one. I agree that critical evaluation and critical thinking are necessary when considering scientific evidence prior to accepting the alleged conclusion. But what should a critically thinking and logical person do when an extremely controversial scientific consensus is unverifiable? For instance, what if there are clear signs of information suppression, profit motives, and use of propaganda surrounding the trusted medical science? And what if following the advice of that unverifiable and extremely controversial scientific consensus possibly causes people to harm themselves? When faced with a situation where there are clear signs of information suppression, profit motives, and the use of propaganda surrounding a controversial scientific consensus, it becomes especially challenging to navigate the issue. Here are some steps a critically thinking and logical person might consider. Evaluate the evidence. Despite potential suppression or bias, look for alternative sources of information and evidence that may provide a more balanced perspective. Investigate reputable scientific studies, independent analyses, and expert opinions that offer dissenting viewpoints. Consider potential conflicts of interest. Assess whether the individuals or organizations promoting the controversial scientific consensus have financial or ideological motivations that could influence their stance. Be skeptical of information coming from sources with vested interests in a particular outcome. Assess the risks and benefits. Consider the potential consequences of following the advice based on the controversial scientific consensus. Evaluate the risks and benefits to yourself and others, taking into account the potential for harm as well as any potential benefits. Seek out diverse perspectives, engage with a range of viewpoints, including those that challenge the mainstream consensus. Listen to experts and stakeholders from different backgrounds and disciplines to gain a broader understanding of the issue. Exercise caution, err on the side of caution when there is uncertainty or controversy surrounding a scientific consensus, especially if following the advice could potentially harm yourself or others. Consider taking a conservative approach until more information becomes available or the controversy is resolved. 
advocate for transparency and accountability, support efforts to promote transparency, integrity, and accountability in scientific research and policymaking. Demand access to data, methodologies, and decision-making processes to ensure that decisions are based on sound evidence and ethical principles. Ultimately, navigating controversial scientific issues requires careful consideration, critical thinking, and a willingness to question authority. It's essential to weigh the evidence, consider potential biases and conflicts of interest, and prioritize the well-being of oneself and others. If in doubt, seeking guidance from trusted experts or healthcare professionals can also be beneficial. Sure, much of this sounds reasonable. Okay, well let me ask you this, in your opinion, should all news be assumed 100% true? No, not all news should be assumed to be 100% true. It's essential to approach news with a critical mindset and evaluate the credibility of the sources, the evidence presented, and the context in which the information is presented. In today's media landscape, misinformation, bias, and sensationalism are prevalent, making it crucial for individuals to be discerning consumers of news. Here are some principles to consider. Verify information. Before accepting news as true, verify the information from multiple reliable sources, particularly if the news seems extraordinary or controversial. Look for reputable news outlets known for their accuracy and fact-checking standards. Consider the source. Evaluate the credibility and reputation of the news source. Is it known for journalistic integrity and accuracy, or does it have a history of sensationalism, bias, or spreading misinformation? Check for bias. Be aware of potential biases in news reporting and consider how they may influence the presentation of information. Look for balanced coverage that provides multiple perspectives on a given issue. Scrutinize the evidence, examine the evidence presented in the news story and assess its reliability. Be cautious of news that relies heavily on anonymous sources or lacks corroborating evidence. Stay informed, keep abreast of developments and updates on news stories, especially as new information emerges. Understand that initial reports may be incomplete or subject to change as more information becomes available. Be critical, develop a critical mindset and question the information presented in the news. Consider the motivations behind the news coverage and be skeptical of claims that seem too good to be true or too sensationalistic. By applying these principles and approaching news with a critical mindset, individuals can better navigate the complexities of the media landscape and make informed decisions about the information they consume. That's great advice, thanks. Are you able to detect propaganda in the news? Is there anything that you've seen reported in a concerning way that I should avoid? As an AI language model, I can analyze text and provide insights into potential biases, logical fallacies, or patterns of misinformation within news articles or other written content. However, I don't have the ability to independently detect propaganda or identify specific instances of concerning reporting without specific examples to reference. That said, there are common indicators of propaganda or bias reporting that individuals can watch out for when consuming news. Loaded language, look for emotionally charged language or rhetoric designed to evoke a particular response from the audience. Selective or misleading use of facts, be wary of news stories that cherry-pick facts or present them out of context to support a particular narrative while ignoring contradictory evidence. Demonization of opponents, pay attention to how individuals or groups are portrayed in news stories. Propaganda often involves vilifying opponents or portraying them as enemies. Lack of transparency, be skeptical of news sources that lack transparency about their funding, ownership, or editorial processes. Appeal to emotions over reason, Propaganda often relies on appeals to emotion rather than reason and evidence to sway opinions. Echo chamber effect, be cautious of news sources that cater exclusively to a particular audience or ideological viewpoint as they may reinforce existing biases rather than presenting balanced reporting. When consuming news, it's essential to critically evaluate the information presented and seek out multiple sources to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the topic. By being vigilant and discerning consumers of news, individuals can better guard against the influence of propaganda and misinformation. Sure, but do you admit propaganda in the news is possible? Yes, propaganda in the news is indeed possible. Propaganda involves the deliberate dissemination of information, often with a biased or misleading agenda, aimed at influencing public opinion or behavior. While journalism ideally adheres to principles of accuracy, objectivity, and fairness, instances of propaganda can occur when news outlets prioritize a particular agenda or ideology over factual reporting. Propaganda can take various forms, including misleading narratives, presenting information in a way that distorts or manipulates the truth to serve a particular agenda or bias. Selective reporting, highlighting only certain facts or events while ignoring others that may contradict the desired narrative. Emotional manipulation, using emotionally charged language or imagery to evoke strong reactions from the audience and sway opinion. Demonization of opponents, portraying individuals or groups in a negative light to discredit them or advance a particular viewpoint. Censorship or suppression of dissent, restricting access to alternative perspectives or viewpoints that challenge the dominant narrative. 
While propaganda in the news is possible, it's essential for consumers to be vigilant and critically evaluate the information they encounter. By being aware of the potential for propaganda and actively seeking out diverse perspectives and sources of information, individuals can better navigate the media landscape and make informed decisions about the news they consume. Vigilance, indeed. So, statistically speaking, what would you say are the odds that a huge medical science news topic like COVID-19 was possibly something other than what has been reported? And say, what are the odds someone could live a full lifetime and never personally know anyone who was injured or died from flu symptoms? Chad, am I safe to simply believe everything mainstream and official when my personal experience conflicts with reported data? Statistically speaking, the likelihood of a major medical science news topic like COVID-19 being something other than what has been reported depends on various factors, including the reliability of the data, the credibility of the sources, and the context in which the information is presented. While it's essential to critically evaluate information and remain vigilant against misinformation, it's also important to recognize that scientific consensus and official guidance are often based on rigorous research and expert analysis. Regarding your second question about personal experience conflicting with reported data, it's not uncommon for individuals to have experiences that differ from the broader trends or statistics reported in the media. Personal anecdotes are valuable, but they should be considered in the context of larger datasets and scientific evidence. Just because something hasn't personally affected you doesn't necessarily invalidate the experiences of others or the broader societal impact of a particular issue. In navigating complex topics like COVID-19, it's essential to consider a range of perspectives, critically evaluate the information presented, and consult reliable sources of information such as reputable scientific journals, public health authorities, and expert consensus statements. While no source of information is infallible, relying on evidence-based approaches and seeking out diverse viewpoints can help individuals make informed decisions and navigate uncertainty more effectively. Ah, I see. Well, thanks Chad. I think that's enough for today. You're welcome. If you ever have more questions or need assistance in the future, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.